If you put in a couple tablespoons, now don't laugh at me, don't laugh at me, put in a couple tablespoons of cocoa powder into a black bean soup, stir that up, oh, already the flavor, see it's not sweet. We automatically associate the image of cocoa with sweetness because that's how we make it. But it doesn't have to be sweet. And in this case, it has pepper in it. Cuban jalapeno peppers and, and uh, Cuban red peppers. Oh boy, this stuff is great. Now I'll serve a bowl for you and you'll understand what I'm talking about. Oh, that's, that's just terrific. Boy, that'll bring them home. Wow, that's rich. Oh, that's rich. These are just some little interesting things I'm trying to find for you because our, our binge today is on the fact that chocolate and cocoa are really American and that they needn't necessarily be sweet. There, now that I've made a mess out of serving that, I can use my thumb. This is an old restaurant trick, you know it. Use your thumb just, just before, as my friend, my cook would say, just before service. He would <laughs> run your thumb around. Isn't that awful? That's the way it's done. All right. Here's, here's a black bean soup with cocoa in it. Let me show you one more. This is a quickie, too. I almost set this hot pot of soup down on a 10-pound chocolate bar that would begin to melt. Oh, we'd all go under. We'd all go under today. All right, here's one. If you, if you take some rye bread, you make rye bread? I've done that for you before, so I don't want to make repeats, but I have a batch of dough here, which is in the which is in the um, sponge stage. We're just getting started on it. So I'm going to put into my rye bread dough. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, I'm gonna put in my rye bread dough a couple of tablespoons of cocoa powder. In rye bread? Yes. And I'm gonna make cocoa rye. There. I'm using a teaspoon, a little plastic teaspoon. That's why you see me putting in two when I say I'm gonna put in, I'm putting in four when I say I'm gonna put in two. Blend it, beat the dough down, let it rise. I have a batch here already for you. This will not be complicated, but what I want you to understand is that, is that the cocoa flavor in bread is wonderful. Look at that. It's, it's not only rising, it's crawling all over the counter. Come here. Come here, you. I always let my doughs rise on a, on a piece of uh, plastic countertop, you see, and put a bowl over the top rather than a wet towel or something. And that way, oop, that way you can, uh, well, you can mold a loaf Shall I go through that process for you? No, I have so many other things I want you to see. Rather than mold a loaf, let me just take a couple out of the oven. Let this rise a second time. Beat it down the first time. You know the, you know the way that's done. And then I want to put a bit of cornmeal. Boy, that's sticky. Wow. That means, because it's sticky, that means that it's going to have, uh, the, the gluten has formed and the dough is going to form a wonderful crust. That's what we want in bread. Good, crunchy crust. There we go. So I have one for you now. I have two in the oven. This batch will make two loaves. There we go. Let me slice one for you. Look at this. Look at this. Cocoa rye. Nice crunchy bottom. Nice. Listen to this. Hear it crack? That's what you want in bread. That's what you want in bread. Let me slice a bit. I'm excited about this. Yes, I have tasted it. That was rude to ask. <laughs> Sometimes I'll do weird things for you like that and not try them till the last minute, but this is awfully soft to be slicing. It's too, it's still warm and very moist inside, you see. But here's a cocoa rye. Oh, this is very, very good stuff. It really is. All right, what's next? Isn't this bizarre? You never know what you're going to get into when we get together, do you? All right, I dare you, I dare you, I dare you to make one batch. Because remember now, cocoa has a, a history of chilies, peppers. Make one batch of brownies, right? And into that throw two cans of chopped green chili peppers. Got that? No, I'm not crazy. Try it. Stir that up. Bake it. Well, I have a batch already baked for you. I know this really sounds weird, but remember that the, the, the chocolate and the chili belong, belong, belong. They're together. All right, this goes into a baking pan, into the oven. You know how to do that. You can, uh, you've got your own favorite brownie recipe. Where's mine? Let me see what I've done with it here. Wrong oven. Here it is. Oh, this is, this, this is cool enough to talk about right now. And in the, in the process of serving these, you will see inside. Oh, this is awfully moist. It's inside there. Well, uh, you can't quite see them, but it's loaded with, with um, chili, green chili peppers. 
and it's wonderful. Trust me, it's absolutely wonderful. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. This is, we've got more going here. Listen, just hang on. All right, the next one. I have, uh, I have a pot of chili cooking on the stove. My favorite recipe, and I'm going to add to that, to my, where's that this big spoon? Here we go. To my regular pot of chili, at the last minute, well, maybe the last 10 minutes of cooking, you see. Oh, you know it's coming, don't you? You know what's going to happen. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Stand by. Here it goes. Put in three or four tablespoons, oh, maybe two, two three tablespoons of chili, of um, cocoa powder, cocoa powder, and stir this up. Do you know who, where they do this all the time? Cincinnati chili has cocoa in it. And I am very, very taken by this. Again, it's a chili base, you know, that is to say, hot peppers, and the cocoa, <coughs> excuse me, seems very much at home here, very much at home. Like the two belong together forever. That's enough. Let's serve up a pot. Can you imagine your kids coming in and saying, wow, what's it for dinner tonight, Dad? And you say, oh, calm down, boys. It's cocoa chili. Why not? Why not? One pot of cocoa chili. It's a wonderful flavor. And besides, sometimes it's fun to harass your kids, isn't it? And they'll sit down and they'll argue, there's no cocoa in here because it's not sweet. And then pretty soon they'll begin to taste it. And then they'll say, Dad or Mom, uh, you're a genius. That's what you want to hear from your kids. Otherwise, why cook? Why cook? All right. Ugh. I have one more. I can't give you the whole recipe. We're running out of time, but we always run out of time. So what's new? But I have prepared a, a sauce, a kind of pepper sauce. And um, there we are. <laughs> well, the end of that spoon. See what I care. Go away. There we are. This is a pepper sauce with some sesame seed and... and uh, good things and i'll give you the recipe in the book but i'm going to add to this some baker's baker's uh semi-sweet chocolate you see just a couple of cubes well, that'd be four cubes how much is that each cube weighs uh each eight one ounce cubes okay so i'm putting in two ounces of chocolate of semi-sweet chocolate this goes back to mexico to a dish called mole problemo they, they used to put it on turkey let me heat that up and we'll put it on some chicken i have my chicken already I'm going to serve chocolate sauce on chicken. No, 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 it is not sweet. It is not what you think. And while that heats, I have one more for you that I think I may, I may be able to complete. We'll warm that a bit and let the chocolate melt. That goes in the last minute. You don't want to cook chocolate. Don't want to cook it at all. Okay. Well, I shouldn't say at all. I, you'd want to overcook it. Finally, in, oh, I want to make a chocolate elephant for you. This is for my wife, Patty, who claims the world doesn't need more moose. We need more elephants. She loves elephants. So, here we go. I have a mess here, first of all. Let's get rid of that one. I have separated 12 eggs. Yes, it's rich. It's rich, it's rich. Uh, let's see, where are they? Here we go. I've separated 12 eggs, and I have just the yolks in this dish, in this bowl. And I want to add two sticks. Can you believe this? Oh, well, it's going to make a lot, though. Is that going to get me off the hook? No, I didn't think so two sticks of butter and the 12 egg yolks and we'll whip those up right now. Okay. It won't take long to blend this. There we are. There we go. Okay. Now to that I'm going to add... There we go. All right. To that I'm going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla to the 12 egg yolks and the half pound of room temperature butter. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla and about three tablespoons, where did I put it? Of almond liqueur or amaretto, amaretto. I think that's how you pronounce amaretto. Oh, I hope so. Uh, oh, I don't know, it's about three tablespoons. This is my own addition. I made this for, for um, Phil Donahue and Willard Scott one afternoon on, on, uh, on uh, Phil Donahue's show and we, we just, we couldn't believe how delicious it is. So. I want you to try again. Okay, while that blends, I want to let you know that there are many, many different kinds of chocolate on the market that you can buy for cooking. And here's, this one is called Baker's German Chocolate. And it's, it's kind of semi-sweet, it's very, very delicious, and I've melted an entire pound of this stuff. Excuse me, something's overdoing here, there it is. Okay, I've melted an entire pound of sweet chocolate in a double boiler. 
Now you know why, because if you melt it in a pan, you're going to overheat the chocolate and it's going to bloom, or you're going to destroy it, it's going to turn gray on you. All right, now we'll put the chocolate, I want to be sure and wipe off the bottom of my double boiler here because I don't want any water in this, it'll ruin it. So we'll pour the chocolate now, the one pound, oh this is disgusting. Isn't this wonderful? One pound of melted chocolate into my 12 egg yolks. Oh, you're going to turn to the health channel, aren't you? Just stop it, because once in a while, this kind of thing is good. And it certainly has all of the right ingredients for serious chocolate lovers. All right, I want to blend that with my egg yolks, butter, almond, and vanilla. And then eventually, okay. That's enough. And then eventually pour that into the 12 egg whites, which I've whipped to a nice meringue along with four tablespoons of sugar. And I'm not going to have time to, I'm not going to have time to pour this one into this one. Got that? We just won't bother. But do pour the chocolate into the egg whites and then fold them over and I'll show you what you get. You get a chocolate elephant that is just delightful and terribly, terribly rich. But it's all right. I think it's all right to do this once in a while, gang. And finally, I have to put the chocolate sauce that we made on the chicken. This is very good. It's melted now. The cocoa's ready, or the chocolate is ready. Stir it into the chicken and we'll put it over the top. Stir it into the sauce, I should say, put the sauce at the top of the chicken. This is just unusual enough so that when your kids come to table, they can always wink at you and laugh a little bit, and then they can turn to their friends and say, see, around here, whoops, <laughs> not too well. Around here, we don't eat normal stuff. We eat American things that go way back in history. Today our lesson was on chocolate. I have made for you Mexican chocolate drink. Wonderful, just make it in your food processor or your, your uh, food blender. This one is, I can't tell you it's authentic, I'm not sure, but it seems to me that this was close to what Montezuma was drinking when Cortez came. Pepper, pepper and chocolate. Patty's elephant, uh, uh, chocolate elephant, black bean soup, chili, try putting green chilies in wonderful brownies or chocolate sauce for your chicken and try a rye bread with cocoa because cocoa belongs to us. We're Americans. This is the Frugal Gourmet. Until I see you again, I bid you peace. Bye-bye.